Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Michael for Spirit Comics. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, please do subscribe and smash that notification bell like she hulk so you do not miss any new uploads from my channel. And you know, even if you have smashed it before, just make sure that you're getting my notifications because I'm hearing from various channels that some people aren't getting notified of of of, of uh, uploads from various channels and also if you do enjoy this video please like it and share it with others and don't forget to leave your comments down below October was a very busy and rough month for me first it started out good I went to Sabasacon from October 5th to the 7th here in Huntington, West Virginia it's an anime convention that's been that was here for more than 10 years but sadly it's moved back to Charleston West Virginia and I had a lot of fun there it was my very first anime convention and I, it was I just it was you know so different from you know Tricon which comes around each uh, June I think but it was different it, it, it I'm not going to say either one is better because they are both good in their own way. And sadly, I'm not going to be going to Charleston for the first Sabasacon next year because I just don't have the, mo the money for it. But anyway, I skipped New Comic Book Day on uh, what was it the f the first the first Wednesday fr in October. So I would have enough money for Subasacon the following weekend. And then the next week, the 10th of October, I went to Purple Earth Comics, got my comic books for both the previous week and that week, and it was, you know, it's very, it was not that much. And I will be, you know, showing them all. As here in a little bit but then you know after the events of Sabasacon and you can find me detailing my eh, my trip to the con convention here on the channel I've got um, some videos about it something else happened to me on the 17th which is not so good and that was another new comic book day. I walked down to Purple Earth Comics and something happened. Now, what you have to know about me is that I was born with epilepsy. I've had it ever since I could crawl. And I had been feeling, feeling a little bit strange since Monday but I wasn't quite sure if it was seizure activity or not so I just kept pressing through the week and Wednesday got here and I was feeling a little bit strange but I thought no I'll just go on anyway because it, I won't be gone very long so I got down to the construction site which is directly across from a Methodist church I stopped and it felt like my left leg was jerking and I had the type of seizures where my body convulses and I have no control over it and so I, for, I think they used to call that grandma seizure and I think now it's called something else and so I decided, well, maybe this is not such a great idea. I, perhaps I should go home. So I turned around and I walked back to the corner where I would, you know, cross to go under the viaduct or underpass, whatever you want to call it. But I did, and I thought, no, I believe I can do this. And so I turned around. And I walked back 
past the construction site, down to down Fourth Avenue, and to Purple Earth Comics. And after I got there, I was aware I had made a mistake because I wasn't feeling well that day. And when I when I was there in the comic shop, I paid for my comics. I didn't stay too long, and I went home. I passed the construction site, you know, went under the viaduct underpass. I walked past the Marathon gas station, which is across from a family dollar, across the street, and then boom, I was out like a light. I had passed out there on the concrete, and I knew it was coming because before I crossed the street, I could feel my left leg jerking my body forward and I was trying to control myself but it wasn't working so when I came to there was two women hovering above me and I didn't have my glasses so I figured out that I had passed out I was alert enough that I tried calling my dad and he didn't answer I tried calling my uncle and he didn't answer. I was in control enough that I could text my mother and let her know what was going on. Then the EMT showed up. I wanted to go home. But of course they said that they, that it, they could not take me home. You know, they weren't cab service. They had to take me to the hospital, so... I said okay and I went to St. Mary's Hospital and I was there for a while and then my mom and dad came they stayed with me for a while and when the people there in the ER were you know sure that I was that 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 I was okay because I was alert I was aware of what was going on they let me go home but I didn't go directly home for good. I stopped by my apartment and I got something that I ne that was was needed because my mom planned on taking me down to her house for a few days. And I'll show you what I'll show you what I got. And this is not something new. It's something I've I've had for quite a few years. And uh. It's been good that I haven't, <coughs> excuse me, needed to use it for more than two years now. This is a helmet. It doesn't look like a helmet, but this is a helmet. See, what I do is I put it on and then pull the strap down here like this. And should I have a seizure should I pass out you know blackout and go tumbling to the floor this will protect me however I didn't have it on my head when I was walking home so my head hit the concrete not the spot of the back of my head which I, I hit a couple years ago when I had a concussion But thank God I do not need to wear that right now. I'm just you know, dem a little demonstration. And the other item I needed to get was this. You know, it's not a dancing cane. It's a cane for support. I've had it for many years. I'm not sure how long. And I use it of course to help myself get around and I, went, I got the helmet and the cane went down to my mom's house and I stayed there for a few days well the very next day Thursday I had five seizures passed out five times and it was pretty bad because it's, it's it's I know for those who don't don't have epilepsy it's hard to imagine 
And maybe you know someone who does have it. But there are many types of seizures. For me, it's like I said, it's losing control of my my movements. You know, my my arm, my left arm will move, and I can't con I can't control it. My left leg will move, and I can't control it. And I have no warning when this is gonna happen either. Sometimes I do, but sometimes I don't. You know, it's just like life. Sometimes you have an, in, an inclination of something that's going to happen. Sometimes you don't. So I stayed down to my mom's house, and she helped me get better. I went home su sa Saturday. And I started feeling better Sunday. Monday, I wasn't quite sure. I was like a little iffy. So... I had stopped wearing my helmet, but I picked it back up, picked, picked it back up, and I put it back on Monday, Tuesday, and 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 Tuesday, because I felt that I needed it, and of course I was still walking around with my cane. Then Tuesday, between 7:30 p.m. and 8 p.m., I was sitting in my den on my couch and I passed out twice had two seizures but from there on in you know from the rest of the week I got better and I bless my mo my mother's heart so much for taking care of me when she, and she actually on the seven on the the, the 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 week after the 17th I can't remember what date that was. She went and bought my comic books for me. And she told John, who's the owner of Purple Earth Comics, that what had happened. He didn't know because I didn't tell him. You know, I never want to worry anybody. So if this stuff happens when I'm here at home, then I don't tell anybody. As long as I can control the situation... I don't tell anybody because I don't want to worry anyone. And, you know, that was pretty much my month. I was able to give out candy on Halloween, October 31st. I was thankful, thankful for that. I saw some very cute costumes and some, some that were very original, too. So... That's what I've been doing this past month, and I'm going to try to get caught up with my comic book reviews. But now, I'm going to show you what I acquired during the month of October. So this is my new comic book day video for the month of October, from beginning to end. So as the... As the phrase goes, on with the show. <laughs> hey everyone, this is Michael, and for Spirit Comics, it is now time to get into a boatload of comics. Alright, as I said previously, October was a busy and rough month for me. The first weekend... I mean, the first week I did not go to a new comic book day. I think that was on the, um, let me see here. That was on the 3rd. Because I wanted to save my money for the Subasicon anime convention that was going to be on the 5th, 6th, and 7th the following weekend. But, after I got out of Subasicon on the 7th, I happened to go over to Empire Books, where they sell a lot of back issues and comic books and, uh, and you know various type of books. And here's one that I happened to pick up. Wonder Woman. Zero. 
This is back when people knew how to draw Wonder Woman. I bought this for five dollars. This is it. This was uh let me see if there's a year on here. Uh it was a dollar fifty, so it was back before you know DC Comics and the rest of them jacked up all their prices. And this is a special story arc, to me anyway, because I have a thing for Wonder Woman, and not just, you know, any type of thing. See, this is the second, I think this is the second uh, or third series of Wonder Woman, and this particular story arc is where she loses her powers in a contest to Artemis. You know, the very tall, busty, long-legged redhead. And, well, apparently this is part two of the contest. That means I'll have to go get the go get part one. But anyway, as you can tell, this is still when they used newsprint and let's see when was this published uh, 1994 they were using newsprint at this time but they were doing a very good job of it I mean just look at that artwork how Chris how how clear it is and I, I, I will have to pick up uh, part one of the contest. And that's Artemis. You know, she's long-legged, busty, redhead. And... If you know anything about this story arc, wow, look at that. I mean, come on, man. I mean, take a look at that. Wow. Wow. That's... I have a weakness for... All things big and busty, I admit. I mean, just look at this artwork. I mean, Wonder Woman drawn as a woman. Not to say that she's not a woman today, but... Oh my goodness, her curves are accentuated here, whereas today, present day, they're not. And this is just a weird, this uh, advertisement. You know, wow! It's a that must have been a, the spinoff of uh, the movie. I never saw the spinoff. So, and just look at this artwork. This is 1994 on newsprint. I think this is before the giant. Uh, comic book collapse or whatever they call it oh my goodness look at these curves you know it's not it, it's no wonder that so many books struggle these days and I'm talking in, in every company well maybe not dynamite because they do a little bit better you know dynamite comics does but be, does better but Marvel and DC in particular they just do not know any, anymore how to draw curves on one. That was issue zero. And I'm gonna, I will look the contest up and see what, when part, what issue part one was. But uh, Empire Books, where I got this, is a fairly new place. And they have a whole bunch of boxes of unbagged and boarded comic books. Now, I did not, like I said, I did not go to get my comic books on the 3rd of October. Oh, yeah. 
because I wanted to go and spend some money at SabasaCon, the anime con. So the following weekend, let me see here, I believe this is, I mean the following week, oh yeah, this is, uh, yeah, this is right back. I went back to Purple Earth Comics and purchased the comic books for both the third and the tenth and this is what I brought home that day okay starting off we have a uh, from Marvel, Iron Tony Stark, Iron Man number four, and he is kissing Wasp. And apparently, whoever did the cover knows how to draw a curvaceous woman. So that's a that that's a good cover. And next up, Green Lanterns, number 56, next to the last issue. I didn't get the variant because I thought it was, I, did, I, I, did, I just didn't like the variant cover. This one is not that great either. I don't know. Just take a look at Hal Jordan's face. It's a little bit bigger than the rest of his body. Notice how it sort of stands out. But it's Green Lanterns, so you know how I got it anyway. This the story will more than likely make up for it. Also from DC Comics Adventures of the Super Sons number three Written by Peter J. Tomasi. And sadly, if uh, you don't know, this takes place before the actual Super Sons run. So this is all you know in the past. But Tomasi is a is not just a fan favorite as people call him, but he is a darn good writer. He's going to be joining detective, the Detective Comics team here shortly. Also, from DC Comics, Harley Quinn, variant cover by Frank Cho. And I know what... Uh, People are saying about Frank Cho these, these days because he said stuff about others. Frankly, I really don't care. <laughs> you know, his covers are just masterpieces. And you know, look at the curves on Harley Quinn. And you open up the book, and she really doesn't have the same curves. She's more or less, you know, skinnier. Alright. Green Arrow from DC Comics number 45. I swear that almost looks like Hal Jordan right there. But that is a pretty cool cover. This is from uh, the third. You know, this is one of those foil covers. I have no earthly idea why DC was doing those foil covers. But this is one of the good covers. Most of them that I saw were trash. From Marvel Comics, Domino number seven. Written by Gail Simone. 
I love this comic book. She's doing a great, doing a great job on it. Excellent job. Next up, from Image Comics, Unnatural number four. This cover is. Yeah, it's not bad. The variant cover, I didn't care care that much for. But I haven't gotten into it yet. I mean, well, October was very busy for me. So I have a lot of back reading to do. A lot of videos to make. So, uh, so I w look forward to getting into this one. From Marvel. Avengers number nine with a punk rock version of Namor on the cover. He looks like 20 years younger than he used to. <laughs> also from DC Comics, Plastic Man number five. That is just, you know, that, that that's cute. You wouldn't dare. Plastic Man ready to spank her good. And that's Bumblebee, if you didn't know. Also from DC Comics, Detective Comics number 990. Variant cover. And, a few, and just a few more issues, and we get Peter J. Tomasi on this title. Leading up to issue 1000. Alright, next up, from DC, Wonder Woman number 56, it's part of the, this uh, thing they call Witching Hour, beats me what the heck it is, I just buy it because it's a Wonder Woman comic book, I am not getting sucked into the this deal anymore from any company, you know, buy this comic book so you can understand what's going on in this comic book. You know, the, the, this, cross, this crossover stuff. Not doing it. Yeah. From Boom Comics. Go Go Power Rangers number 13. That's an awesome cover right there. Very beautiful. I'm glad the Shatter Grid storyline is finished because I didn't, I didn't get to I still haven't caught up on it Marvel Universe number uh, well this is a uh, it's free the uncanny X-Men number one disassembled by Ed Brisson Kelly Thompson and Matthew Rosenberg I like all three of those writers I do but I don't like the price of this Uncanny X-Men number one. It's uh, going to be... I'm not even sure if it's going to be in here. But th this, uh, you know, tells you what's going to be coming up. It's pretty cool. And I passed this one up. spider Gwen Ghost Spider. Come on, that is just a cheap. That is, Ghost Spider is just cheesy. But anyway, you know, I am not buying Uncanny X Men number one because it'll be a seven ninety nine price tag. No, thank you. DC Nation number five. It has that ugly. And boring Batman who laughs more like the Batman who can't shut up on the cover yeah counting down the deadliest threats in the DC Universe well I can tell you this the deadliest threat in the DC Universe is not one of the characters so that was it for 
Excuse me. That was October 3rd and 10th. Now, the following week was October 17th. And that's the one where I walked down to Purple Earth Comics and was having seizure activity along the way. Decided I would go home. But decided, no, I can do this. And then on my way back, I passed out. I had a seizure on the on a corner. Uh, curb corner and went to the hospital and so the next two weeks I was pretty much laid up all right but this is what I bought that day from DC Comics Harley Quinn number 52 variant cover that is a beautiful variant cover and she loves those hyenas <laughs> Now, this is something I noticed, uh, this next comic book is something I noticed at Purple Earth Comics, I think it was, uh, the two weeks before. Divinica, issue one. Now, I already have this, but I don't have this cover. Now, if you don't know anything about Divinica, then I'll give you a little bit of information without actually without or I could just you know read the inside of the comic book but then you wouldn't get to look at these beautiful women basically the uh, this is from JP Roth or was it Rothic I can't remember and the the Divinica comic book is stories about a different goddess from all the pantheons that have ever existed. And this first one was about Aphrodite. And this is what uh, J.P. Roth has to say here. This is to honor the goddesses of present and past to prove magical life is as desirable as woman made to thrive rule and last well all I can say is you know just check out this artwork this beautiful artwork it's wonderful and I have issues two and three four is on is still in production I think from Marvel Astonishing X-Men number 16 written by Matthew Rosenberg there's Havoc on the cover Alex Summer also from Marvel Mr. and Mrs. X Oh, that is a wonderful cover. I'm sad to say that the uh, the artwork inside just does not captivate me as much as the the cover did. Thor, number six. He's facing Doctor Doom. Why? I'm not sure. And the cover looks just, you know, well, not perfect, but proper for October. Deja Thoris, number five from Dynamite Comics. This is one of the few titles I get from Dynamite. Well, actually, I get quite a few of them. I just have to. Uh, I just haven't been able to buy them in a long time. And the artwork in this comic book is beautiful. If you don't haven't read it, 
Start with issue zero and work your way up. All right, from Marvel, the life of Captain Marvel. I saw the variant cover for this and I was totally turned off. So I went with the regular cover and it's not too bad. I'm really enjoying this series and particularly because they gave Captain Marvel long hair again. Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider-Man, number 311. It's a Spider-Geddon tie-in. I know nothing about Spider-Geddon. I don't care about Spider-Geddon. I'm just going to enjoy the story. And the last one for October 17th is the last issue of Green Lanterns. Variant cover featuring the beautiful Jessica Cruz who is regulated to being one of the sidekicks in uh, Justice League Odyssey. I'm not buying that book. Uh-uh. No way. Jessica Cruz is beautiful. She deserves more page time than anybody in, in Odyssey. And this is a crush. It's one of the strange new members in the Teen Titans. She's one Caesarian, you know, from the same race as uh, Lobo. Very strange because it's it's canon that Lobo was the last of his race. So go figure. All right, the following week, I was not up to going down to Purple Earth Comics here in Huntington, West Virginia. So, my mother went and got comic books for me. This should worry all of us. Young Justice Returns. Bart Allen, Connor Kent, and Tim Drake is Robin. Introducing Wonder Comics. This stuff is going to be canon. I've heard that it's going to be, there's going to be a Young Justice pop-up book featuring these three characters here, and it's going to be canon. And that was uh, spread by Brian Michael Bendis on Twitter. Now, how Connor Kent and John Kent can exist in the same universe at the same time is confusing. Add to that, Damian Wayne is the current Robin, and this is Tim Drake. He's going to be, he's, he's going to be Robin. Oh, never mind the fact that currently he's called Red Robin. Uh, sometimes I really believe these, these people just have no idea what they're doing. From Marvel, Return of Wolverine number two. This is five issue series. I guess they're still going on about the uh, heated claws. You know, they're no longer adam just adamantium, but they're heated adamantium. Go figure. This is X-Men Red number 9 by Tom Taylor. I have never been disappointed with X-Men Red. But I tell you, this cover with Nightcrawler looking all clean cut just makes me wonder what in the world's going on. Because he's always been a scruffy guy. 
from DC. This is Batman Beyond number 25. Here's another foil cover that doesn't suck. This is pretty darn good. You know, there's the bat signal of the future. And it's pretty nice. From Boom Comics. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number 32. Beyond the Grid. I guess they're still playing up the Shattered Grid storyline. Or maybe it's the aftermath. I don't know. Detective Comics number 991. Uh, the Commissioner and their partner in crime. That would be Two Face. Interesting. Raven, Daughter of Darkness, number nine. I've been enjoying this. I really have. It's been a fun. It's been a fun read. Three more issues, and this is, will be finished. Probably sometime in 2019. Wonder Woman, number 57, The Witching Hour, part 4. And that's like, I think that's a Zatanna on the cover there, and Manbat. Maybe it's a, I don't know, I, I think that's Manbat. And, yeah, that has to be Zatanna. So that, that should be interesting as well. Also from Dynamite Comics, quite a few here. Vampirella, Deja Thoris, number two. You gotta love that cover, man. It is just something else. Alright, let's see here. Oh, yeah. Vampirella Halloween Special. Oh my goodness, I could just fall in love with her. I really could. I know, she's a, she's fictional. Still, I could fall in love with her. Vampirella number two. I'm not sure if this is going to be a limited uh, series, but look at that cover, how she's holding her stomach like she's just in awe of something. And the, just the way she's drawn. I believe that the artist is this woman here. Christina Deke Lens here. Let's open this up and check. Okay. Yeah, no, the, the, the writer is Christina Deke Lens here. And the artist is her husband, Joseph Michael Lensner. So if you got a husband and wife on team on this, and it looks pretty darn good. The Marvel free previews. Guardians of the Galaxy number one. Oh, great. oh goody, that's going to be coming back. Okay, there's one more bag. This one I bought the day after Halloween, the, the 1st of November. Okay, let me make sure I have this in the right set up. Oh yeah, here we go. John saved he and well, he didn't he didn't save anything for me but he still had the Halloween Comic Fest books out when I when I got there and I picked up two of them. The first one was free and the second one was 69 cents. Here's the first one. This is from Co 
Kodanasha Comics. This is a manga comic. And how do I know this? Because it opens up this way. This is the beginning of the story. It's all in black and white. Progresses. Till we get to the end. And this is the back. So, I am really getting into manga. So, I... I decided to pick this up. And the other title is also manga. This is from Halloween Comic Fest. This is Apossum, Apossums. And I cannot pronounce that person's name. But this also opens up like manga does. And apparently uh, this is just volume one because you can, you can see here. You know, it's volume one which is, is what I have here. And volume two comes in early 2019. And it uh, also is in black and white. But it is drawn in the, you know the, in a, in a very futuristic type style. But not in the, but the, and the eyes are not too, too, too exaggerated. They are a little bit, but I like them. And uh, this is, you know. An advertisement for another uh, comic book from uh, the same company. This is called Vertical Comics. Rated T for Teen. Alright, Tony Stark Iron Man number 5 from Marvel Comics. Now, this is a real treat. Extermination number four. They decided to print this one in the classic Marvel style. Up here has has Marvel Comics Group, and here the side box has you know images of everybody who's in this issue. Well, the most of everybody. Except there's the adult Jean Grey, and wow, she looks great. Also from Marvel, X-Men Black, Emma Frost. They've been, Marvel's been doing a um, limited series called X-Men Black and I have not bothered with the rest of them because frankly I could care less about the other characters but Emma Frost is a knockout so I had to get I had to get hers I mean let's just you know take some let that you know that right there you know that, that's beautiful to me yeah, the neck's a little bit too long. I realize that. But hey, we all make mistakes. I'm not perfect. It's Emma Frost. How can I say no? And while I was there, I saw this from Image Comic Books. I am not a fan of Image other than I have been getting the unnatural series this is a new one called Exor Sisters number one and 
look, look at it. There's one of them. There's one sister. Turn it around. And you see the other one. I guess they're, they're polar opposites. This one is, you know, I guess a musician playing a guitar. Well, this one is studying exorcism. Now, what I liked about this is the art style. It's an all ages art style. There's, you know, nothing that I can see wrong with this, and I will b definitely be be getting to a review on this. The the art is just you know wonderful, and it even tells about the the story in the bag. So. I'm not sure if I can recommend this just yet, but I, it's going to be interesting to read. Now, the last one, I decided to pick this up because I've been wanting this for a long, for a long while. This is nothing new. This came out in 2014. This is by Grant Morrison. It's called The Multiversity, and it's basically several stories of where Grant Morrison somehow ties every universe together. And, you know, just for those who've been going on recently about uh, a black Superman, you know, you can't have that. Well, DC Comics already had one. He's been around for quite a while. I think his name is Val Zod. It's not Clark Kent. It's Val Zod from an alternate universe. And this is going to be fun to read. I doubt that I can re review the entire thing, but I will review each individual story that's in here. I'll do my best. So that was uh, it for New Comic Book Day for October 2018, since I didn't get to make one single video for New Comic Book Day, I decided to do everything in one, since now it's November. So I hope you all enjoyed. I am Michael for Spirit Comics. Thank you for stopping by my channel. If you're new here, please do subscribe, you know, and smash that notifi notification bell like She-Hulk so you do not miss any new uploads. Also, please do like and share this video with others so they can enjoy it as well. And don't forget to leave your comments down below. Till next time, readers, I am Michael for Spirit Comics.